Good morning lovelies, how are we doing? Today is the 5th of December and it's the 5th day of our 6 part series on how to store and preserve your Christmas vegetables which for many supermarkets is becoming a thing from the 18th of December here in the UK with dropping their prices down to last year's prices which is really good for a lot of us because it means that we can go and stock up you know but if we're going to stock up we want to know how to preserve those so because we don't want them going off before we get to use them and we don't really want them taking up space in places where we would be better off putting other things so we're going to start looking at preserving cabbages today yes we are first off we're going to be looking at fresh preserved well freshly storing your cabbages now if you have got a shed or an outside space that is contained and you're able to put some shelves up and things like that you can keep some of your veg out there that's a really good way to do it they only need to be on a rack somewhere cool you can do that indoors as well uh, if your cabbages have come with the outer leaves off and wrapped in plastic then you want to take that plastic off because as we've said with other vegetables cabbages are a living breathing plant living breathing plants breathe and they cause condensation when they do that so to leave them in a plastic confined space is like leaving you in a car with the windows up in winter where it's all going to start fogging up water coming down the you know the condensation starts running on the windows you know and and if you're in a confined space it's got nowhere to go so then it starts to rot the vegetable it's what we don't want we want to make the most of the vegetables that we can get keeping them in a cool space if you have a cool cupboard in your house put them in the cool cupboard if you have a colder room in the house keep them in that room you can keep them as i said in a vegetable rack in the kitchen quite happily they'll stay there for a couple of weeks without a problem or you can keep them in the fridge and if you keep them in the fridge just as long as they're out of their plastic they should be okay for a good oh four or five weeks i want to say four or five weeks honestly you know that that's not to be sniffed at number two is frozen now frozen cabbage can be done either with red or white cabbages without too much hassle you cut it into the size pieces you want blanch it off dump it in an ice ice bath afterwards to stop the cooking put it all on baking trays freeze it all in a single layer first or in individual pieces if you're doing quarters or wedges or whatever and then put them in the baggies or containers that you would prefer to keep them in it's that simple you know freezing vegetables isn't that hard it does can take up quite a lot of room though in the freezer and i prefer personally to keep my freezer for ready-made meals that i've made you know or side dishes or things like that that being said i would look at something like maybe dehydrating i have a dehydrator i'm very lucky to have one not everybody has one and that's fine you don't have to have one but for those of us who have them and can afford to run them dehydrating your cabbage is an option now you can do it both with the red and the white but i would suggest to you to shred it very thinly and if you are going to use dehydrated cabbage then you can either use it in soups, stews stuff like that to rehydrate or you know make it down into a powder so that you can add it to other things like stock powders and you know all kinds of other things the next thing we're going to look at is water bathing our cabbage now it is a thing it can be done it can be done like all vegetables that are to be water bathed in either a half liter liter jar which is the pint or the quart um, respectively you're looking at a teaspoon of salt with 
a little bit I like a tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice and what bathing for them to for two hours <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about this one it's a cruciferous vegetable right cabbage does better if it's cooked for a lot very short amount of time and it's tastier it's got more texture all of that kind of stuff saying that I've never actually water bath cabbage so I may have to be an experiment that I try out in the new year with some of our stocked up veg but give it a go if that's if that's the option you have do it I'm not saying don't do it do it and if you look to the link below in the description you will find the, the link to the companion blog for this video and you will find places there where people have actually wart bathed their cabbage. So yes, it can be done. Can it be pressure canned? Yes, apparently it can. Uh, but I don't pressure can. I'm not qualified to talk on it. So again, you're going to have to look in the blog for those options um, for people who've already done it. it seems to be a couple of different ways that people tend to pressure can their cabbage one is by making sauerkraut which is very similar to the sauerkraut that you buy in the stores okay and we're going to talk about that very shortly but you know it you can do that with either the red or the white cabbage it, it doesn't make any difference if that's what you want to do then go ahead Go ahead, it's not a problem, you know. Again, I will put links to this in the blog itself. So we started talking about it, we're gonna finish talking about it. Sauerkraut, fermented cabbage. Brilliant, easy, simple, keeps all year. In a fermentation bucket, happily in the shed or in a cold space or anywhere. Yes, you can put it in once it's finished its fermentation, that is. It literally is cabbages and salt. For every cabbage, you want a tablespoon of salt. I love making sauerkraut and it's something that I make oh, once a year. I do 10 cabbages worth. I put it in a fermentation bucket that is big enough that it was created for wine making and home brew making. Um, it's completely filled by the time I've cut up all the cabbages and put them in the bucket it's completely filled but once it's done it's about a fifth the size it fills about a fifth of the bucket you sit there and you pound it and you pound it and you pound it and you pound it until the juices from the cabbage actually cover the cabbage itself because that is really really important because the fermenting process for cabbage is that they ferment in their own juice. Okay, that, that's the bottom line here. They ferment in their own juice. Sauerkraut homemade is completely different animal to what you buy in the stores. It's completely different. It's crunchy, it's fresh flavored, it's just so good. I can't even tell you how good it is because it's that good. All right, now you can do it with white or red cabbages. I tend to do it with white cabbages because that seems to be what's available most of the time. Um, and I prefer doing other things with red ones. But you can do it with red cabbage and if that's what you've got, then that's what you use, yeah? But so simple, it's great. I mean, I sit there with the bucket between my knees, pounding away while watching a Christmas movie most of the time when I do it. It's then you need to weight it. So I use the top of one of our plastic bowls that also um, doubles as a salad bowl. I use the lid of that and I get one of my five litre um, bottles of vinegar and I place that on top. So, and then I leave it for two weeks with an airlock on top. And in my airlocks, I tend to put white vinegar. And the reason being, it really does stop any excess bacteria from getting into the product and it really does stop any fruit flies or anything that want to get in there as well okay so and it doesn't evaporate it doesn't evaporate like water does so water in an airlock could evaporate and you need to keep the 
keep an eye on the um, level in there to make sure that it's not evaporating. So yeah, that's basically fermenting um, sauerkraut. Once it's finished, it's fermenting and you'll know that because the bubbles will have stopped in the airlock. You can then decant it into whatever container you like as long as it's covered and keep it in the shed or keep it somewhere cool wherever your pantry is that kind of thing and just use it as you want it you don't need to um, put it in the fridge it's not necessary to put it in the fridge uh, just keep it as it is I know of someone whose father takes an axe to theirs every year because it's kept in the shed and where it's kept in the shed it turns to ice when it freezes so he gets an axe out and starts chopping bits out of it you know and he uses it that way now I've with fermented cabbage can you tell this is my favorite way of storing cabbage can you can can you tell right um, I stir fry with it I cook it like I would any other normal cabbage dish I do anything at all with it that you would do with normal cabbage it is so good and it has that extra flavor and it's so good for gut health what i will say with fermented foods is this don't have too much if you're not used to them because your body will go oh look we got all of this stuff let's do a cleanse and we all know what a cleanse means right mm. it means spending half of your christmas in the bathroom not letting anyone out it, it's not a good place to be in and yes your body will be nice and cleansed but you know um it's not a good position to be in at this time of the year i'm not gonna lie but having a little bit of what you fancy and a little bit of sauerkraut with uh, on the side and stuff like that is great just don't have a great big bowl of it because yeah you, you you could be in trouble all right pickled Pickled cabbage is a very, very traditional way of preserving and serving cabbage. Now, it's more traditionally done with red cabbage than it is with white cabbage. But if you've got white cabbage, then use the white cabbage. If you've got red, use the red. It doesn't matter. Loads of recipes for this. Go and check out the blog. All the link for that will be down in the description below this video. We're going to look at side dishes okay and I know that normally we look at something a little bit different at this point but actually I want to keep the red and white cabbages for the next two sections separate the reason for this is that you tend to find two different ways of or schools of thought when it comes to red and green cabbages or white cabbages or whatever they tend to be used for different things now red cabbage tends to be a more savory more braised kind of um, recipe or side dish whereas white cabbage tends to be more steamed more roasted more all kinds of different ways of cooking it and it tends to be a little bit more Asian I want to say Asian with its flavor profiles so things like ginger and star anise sorry and things like that go really really well with white cabbage whereas with red cabbage you're better off with things like caraway seeds and brown sugar and butter and stuff like that there are millions of side dishes out there and they do just as well frozen and some of them do really well water bath or pressure canned however you want to store them so red side dishes like I said I mean I tend to there are two ways that I do it um, but both ways can either be water bath or, pre or frozen and that's either to do your braised cabbage your braised red cabbage with all of the really nice sort of caraway deep earthy spicing with a little bit of brown sugar you know soft brown sugar or molasses sugar depending on how deep you want that flavor to be um, it's slow cooked to get it to that point and then you can either freeze it or you can water bath or pressure can it I, I don't mind having a jar of that around so that I can actually 
just open it up and warm it up and I don't mind having it in the freezer either so that I can just pick the, the container up and chuck it in the oven. It, it, it just works either way for me, it doesn't bother me at all. When it comes to white, white cabbage side dishes, I prefer to go the more Chinese kind of Southeast Asian way with it. I prefer adding things like garlic and ginger and steaming big wedges of it. I um, One of my favorite things that my mum used to make as, when we were kids was beef and, beef and cabbage and it was, it was Chinese beef and cabbage or she called it Chinese beef and cabbage. It was very basic, you know, she'd marinated off the beef and then she'd stir fry the cabbage, but it was always steamed a little bit first and it was steamed with chunks of ginger and garlic and a little bit of butter, which I'm, I'm very aware it wasn't very Chinese at all, to be fair. But those are the kinds of flavor profiles, you know, and then it was all stir fried together. And I'm good with that. I am good with that. But then again, I'm also of the mind of, I prefer white cabbage as a cold or as a cold side or as a salad rather than the red. The red, I, and I don't know why. I can't tell you why because to me, they don't really taste that different. They really don't. It's all about preference at the end of the day when it comes to cabbages and side dishes. So, you know, it, it's entirely up to you. So then we're gonna move on to soups. Now, red cabbage soups are very different again to white cabbage soups. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I, I, I have no idea why, <laughs> I really don't. Perhaps it's just because of the areas they grow in in the world, naturally, traditionally. Um, red cabbages are more likely to be um, Eastern European, whereas white cabbages are more likely to be, you know, European and, you know, Western European and, you know, Asian. So it, it's... There are lots of different, there are so many, I can't even tell you, you know, I really can't, there, there's just so many, there are so many, you know, and I just think we just have to look at what our preferences are and what's available to us and at 19 pH you're probably going to get a cabbage that's about that size, honestly it's probably going to be about that size. It's not going to be huge at all. Now the cabbages that I saw this week were about 50 pH. But from the 18th, a lot of the supermarkets here in the UK are dropping that price down to 19 pH and they're going to be about that size. Now the only place you will not find them at 19 P is Lidl because instead of cabbages in their Christmas vegetables this year, they're having a 300 gram bag of shallots. And I'm not quite sure why, because a 300 gram bag of shallots is probably going to be about, mm, I don't know, six shallots. To me, it's not going to be worth it. It really isn't. I mean, I, I can interchange a shallot and an onion and it doesn't make any difference. Hi guys, editing blue here and my camera stopped. <laughs> Ah, it's okay, it's all good. But what I was saying was that, you know, onions, shallots, pretty interchangeable. But cabbages, there are so much scope for what you can do to preserve them and have them in your pantry, your freezer or your fridge or even in your shed for the more long term. Okay, so if I were you and this is what I will be doing, I will be going to where I can buy the cabbages from rather than where I can get the shallots from because I, it's just a fancy onion. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a fancy onion. So guys, tomorrow we will be talking about Swedes, 
or rutabagas as is known in the US and other parts of the world it's just basically a big giant yellow turnip yeah um but there's a lot you can do to preserve them and while they're 19p and most of the ones that I've seen around are pretty hefty sizes I would be doing everything I can to get as many as I possibly can well okay we've got a we have just just to be incredibly clear about this we're not going and clearing the shelves and I'm not asking anybody else to do that what I'm saying is instead of spending a pound and getting one bag or maybe two bags spend your pound and get five bags or five cabbages or five sweets you know make sure you leave some for other people because some people can't afford that pound to do that that pound might be their money to get one of everything for out of the Christmas vegetables so that they can feed their family for Christmas or for just during the week okay so don't don't go mad about these things be reasonable think of others and just have a few extra it's not gonna hurt you it's not gonna hurt anybody else they they're doing this because they know they have a lot and they are aware that some people will go in and buy two or three or four or five be mindful of other people when you go and do the shopping for the cheaper veg this year um, there are a lot of people who are out there doing it tough a third of the population of the country at the moment is living in poverty and 15% of them are living in destitution so it really is a good idea to think about them don't put somebody else in hardship just because you've got more money than they have and can go and fill your shed with you know 100 bags of potatoes or something like that don't do it it's not worth it we, we've put a limit on our spending on it. We're only going to be set spending six pounds, anything over and above. And, you know, obviously that's not going to cover it. You know, it's it's going to co cover enough that we get five of each or five bags of each or whatever. But it's going to give us a few that it's going to do me and Tanny over the next few months without having to worry too much about, you know, storing stuff in our freezers and all of that kind of thing we, we've got options and that is what these this series is about giving people options all right now i will see you tomorrow i love you guys heaps bye